is presented to you by the Hope Channel Network. The following program discusses health issues in a general manner. It is not intended to replace the advice of your personal physician. Hello and welcome to Life Speed. Today we've got a very interesting topic. It's a topic that sometimes causes a lot of debate. And we want you to listen to this program uh, with an open mind. I have as uh, the guest in the studio here, uh, Stoy Proctor. Stoy Proctor is an associate in our department, but he's also a nutritionist. Stoy, you also chair the Nutrition Council of the General Conference. Could you tell me just a little bit about the composition of that uh, council? We have, I think, a very representative composition among the different professionals in our church. We have uh, individuals from Loma Linda University, Andrews University. We have, so we have university professors, we have medical doctors, we have a number of dietitians. We have a number of uh, dietitians specializing in different areas, in the area of lipids, fats, proteins, carbohydrates, and so on. We have home economics teachers. We have uh, diet hospital dietitians. We have community dietitians. And so we have a large number, large representative number, probably about 25, that, and we also have representatives from different divisions of the world. So uh, as a spokesperson, a chairman of that committee, uh, can we, uh, as viewers and me as the interviewer, assume that what you're going to be talking about is a fairly fair representation of the collective opinion of these multiple experts in the field? By all means. We have on our committee probably about a third that are total vegetarian, about a, about three, about two thirds that are lacto ovo vegetarians, and so they're using milk and eggs in uh, in a moderate amount. But, so we're uh, going we, to have, we have a large number. You we're know, going to be discussing a consensus opinion yes. rather than your mm -hmm. own personal yes. opinion. I, I, I went through that just so that our viewers could understand that uh, this is not a, a personal uh, uh, statement, or we're not discussing something uh, just that's personal to you. We're going to be talking about milk, cheese, eggs as part of a diet uh, that people should eat if they are vegetarians. As soon as I say those words, I know that many of our viewers are going to be polarized into one of two camps. What are the emotions that you usually come across when you start to raise those words? It's all over the place. One is, oh, I just love a cold glass of milk with that freshly baked cookie. Or, uh, my, I shouldn't have taken that piece of cheese or even that entree with cheese in it because I don't eat cheese. Or you might be very proud. I don't have a problem with cheese. I can pass by milk any time because I don't believe in eating them. Or you might be thankful. Lord, I'm, I'm just so thankful I've got milk and eggs and cheese and to, to, to supply the nutrients in my, my system. So well, I think the emotions are all over the place. All right, so with a diversity of emotions like this, it may be that there have been a diversity of uh, advices, studies, and things that have come in that have influenced the thinking of people. Could you give us a little bit of background as to what the criticism has been uh, about dairy uh, over the years and bring us up to date as to where we are with that situation. And I think some of the first things I heard, of course I grew up on a farm with dairy cows, so I didn't see anything wrong with milk uh, or eggs or cheese at all. Uh, but as I began to study at the university, I found that, you know, we were looking at saturated fat and cholesterol and, you know, those might impact uh, the risk of heart disease. So that was one of the first things. But then there were a few people here and there that were talking about uh, drinking of milk, especially of babies causing juvenile diabetes, that it was causing cancer, it was c f causing people with uh, low IQs. They were making all kinds of, of statements about this, but I'll tell you, it, uh, 
it, it, there are, there, these, these little studies are very small and few and far between. So do you think that there's an emotional reason uh, that people go for milk or against milk that maybe uh, overshadows sometimes the choice of the studies that they wish to invoke in supporting their particular stance? You know, there are different type of reasons why people <coughs> are not using milk or use, are using milk. Some are looking at it from a purely nutritional point of view, and others are looking at it, I think, from a philosophical or theological or, or religious point of view. Uh, we have the, t the people after the animal rights people that don't want to use in milk or eggs or any animal products, and they have a, a, a different reason for using it. And I think sometimes uh, Christians um, that are um, that are that are vegetarian or that are that are not using milk, they use, they pick up these same reasons. We are product of our time sometimes. Now, you at one point in your life. Uh, did not take any dairy or did not take any uh, well, you, you, any eggs or anything you were a strictly... no, I was a, I was a strict I, I tried it out for about 10 years and my wife and I and we just got to the point where it wasn't working what well, do you mean it wasn't working well when you start getting cracks in your mouth uh, and when you start getting cramps in your legs uh, you know and then as soon as you drink a glass of milk for a few days drinks milk for a few days those go away and you say oh, to yourself, oh, I don't want, I don't want to drink milk. Uh, you know, I, it's, uh, it spoils quicker than soy milk and so on in the refrigerator. And so I don't do that. So you go back to drinking milk. I leave off milk. The cramps and the cracks come back. And I says, you know, it's not working for me. Now, sometimes we're told that we are the only people, Western uh, cultures are the only people that really uh, take a lot of milk. Is that true? Well, I, you know, I'd, I've been told that a number of times, and I'm, I'm reading that in books, but I can tell you this after doing a little research. Milk drinking has been around for a long time by all types of cultures, by all types of races, by all types of cultural groups. For instance, if you just look at the, the Mongolians, they milk the, the yak. And you look at the people in northern Norway and Russia, they milk the rainbow. And you take the Arabs in the <laughs> desert, the, rainbow, the, rainbow, the reindeer. I mean, reindeer. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> they're looking for the rainbow. Yes. Uh, but uh, then we take the Arabs in the desert. They milk, take the milk of the camel, and uh -huh. we take the uh, the uh, Mongolians also the milk of the horse, and well, we take the Maasai. And I've just been to, to Kenya. Yeah. I, the, think, I think what we're going to have to do is going to have to come back and continue this discussion because clearly you are setting the stage for quite a discussion on milk and dairy. My name is Jan Paulsen. I want you to meet some very, very gifted individuals. These are people who are not just simply standing by. These are people who are seeking the optimum.